evening, good afternoon, good night, wherever you're joining the broadcast from. My name is Julia Spence, and I am a certified life coach. I founded a company called Liberty Life Coaching Solutions. I'm a speaker, a certified life coach, and women hire me to help bring clarity, confront limiting mindsets, beliefs, and actions, establish accountability, and create action steps in their relationships, spiritual walk, and divine purpose. So I'm happy that you are hopping on in. Hi, Mia. Hi, Dawn. Thanks for joining the broadcast today. For those of you that would have watched the broadcast this week, I did a broadcast this week on Manhunt. And I shared with you revelation and insight that the Lord had given me that the enemy has been after men from the beginning. The seed of the woman will bruise the head of the serpent. Thanks for joining, Claire. Hope you guys can hear me well. Hi, Chito. Thanks for joining the broadcast. Come on in. As we embark on the insight that God has given me, I want you guys to be praying. I want you guys to be sharing the broadcast. I want you guys to participate. Let me know where you're joining from. Thanks for joining, Sister Chito. And let's take this clarion call that the Lord is placing on us. Let's take it seriously. Why do I say that? Oftentimes, as women, we get discouraged when our men are not functioning as they should. And we take it personal. And I totally get it. But God wants us to see the work of the enemy in the background. The Bible tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. And therefore, it is easy when you're going through a situation. Now, this broadcast is going to be sobering, but the intent of it is to bring transformation and to take action according to what the Holy Spirit is saying to us individually as women and as, a, as women collectively. So stick around. Okay? This is what he the Holy Spirit shared with me this week that he is calling women to be deliverers. He is calling women to be deliverers on behalf of men. I went to a conference at the beginning of 2019 and I heard the apostle share that God is raising up men to bring restoration in the lives of women. And I got all excited about that. But when the Holy Spirit said to me, he is raising up. He said this to me about two, three mornings ago. He said, though I am raising up women to be deliverers for men. So, of course, the Holy Spirit is speaking. I'm listening. And so we're going to go into the word of God today. So get your Bibles out. Absolutely. Sister Cheeto said, birthing the men out. I keep hearing that a lot this year. A absolutely. Because when God created heaven and earth and humanity, he wants us to be co-laborers. Thanks for joining, Giselle. He want, God wants the man and the woman to be co-laborers. But since the enemy hates mankind, if I were him, I would put division between husband and wife. I will put division between father and mother. I will put division between male and female. And that's his modus operandi. But as the church, we have to recognize that the enemy will do what the enemy will do until God says it is time for him to be no more. And so we have not to be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. And that's where the, the church has been falling down. We have been ignorant of the devices of the enemy. And that's why he has come into our homes and stolen, killed, and destroyed. But God is raising up a people that he's giving new insight, new revelation, new understanding of the work of the enemy and of the work of the Father so that we can teach, train, and equip. And at Liberty Life Coaching Solutions, that's what I do. I love to teach train and equip and build the body of Christ. Kimberly York, my sister from the USA, thank you so much for joining the broadcast. So today, God wants women to be deliverers. Okay, so let us skip over to, let me make sure I got my notes in order. So the first woman we're going to look at, she is in Exodus 2, 
5 to 10. That's Exodus 2, 5 to 10. And she is Pharaoh's daughter. So here we go. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river. And her maiden walked along by the riverside. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she set her mind to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child. And behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him and said, This is one of the Hebrew children. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call thee a nurse of the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for thee? See? So we've got already, we're seeing what's happening here. God is using the daughter of Pharaoh to assist Moses to draw him out of the water. She is used, God is using the sister with wisdom and insight. Thanks for joining, Wanda. Thanks for joining Kelly. We're talking about women being deliverers. God is calling women in this season to be deliverers. Yes, Kelly, it has been a while. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, go. And the maiden went and called the, children's, the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wage. And the woman took the child and nursed it. And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son, and she called his name Moses. And she said, because I drew him out of water. So right there, I'm going to give you the first challenge. What waters has God called you to bring men out of? First challenge. So we see this woman in operating in the capacity of a deliverer. Now, this is the enemy, right? Her father gave an edict to kill all the Hebrew boys, but to save the girls. And here she is, heard, heard, heard the edict from her dad, but she decided, I am going to be a deliverer for the children of... You okay? Yeah. For the children of... For, for, for this young man, Moses. Because thanks for sharing the, the broadcast, Kelly. Those of you online, if you think that this is going to bless somebody, please share it out to your page or share it privately. But God is calling women to be deliverers. So she spent money, her own money, to have him nursed and taken care of until he was at the right age. Right age to, to, uh, to come back to her, right? So that's the first deliverer. Now we're going to, that was the Old Testament. Now we're going to jump into the New Testament. John 4, we're going to read 6 to 7, 18, and then 25 to 29. So John 4, 6 to 7, 18, 25 to 29. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. Now we're going to hop down to 18. And it says, Jesus said to her, Now Jesus spoke to her. The two of them had this conversation back and forth. And then she said, Jesus said to her, Right? Jesus is going to touch her pain point. Now Jesus is going to touch where she has missed the mark. But how many know that when Jesus touches where we miss the mark, that means that he's trying to heal and deliver us. And I'm going to put a pin there. I'm going to read and then we're going to come back to something. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that saith thou truly. So she's had five husbands. We don't know if she was married five times, if she's a prostitute, if she's had other women's husbands. But Jesus is telling her, you know, I know about you, right? I know about you. You had five husbands. And the man that you have now is not your own husband. So you have another woman's husband. And then he hops down. We hop down to 25 to 29. The woman said unto him, I know that Messiah cometh. Who is called Christ when he is come so they had a discourse about worship and Jesus said the father is looking for those who will worship in spirit and truth so uh, back down to when he when he is come 
he will tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. So this woman had a divine encounter with Jesus Christ in her mess, but she had a divine encounter with Christ. And unto, unto this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with a woman, yet no man said, What seeketh thou? Or why talkest thou to her? The woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and saith to the men. You hear who she went to? The men. God is calling women to be delivered. So the same men that she would have slept with, would have had illicit relationships with, she went right back to them. And she said, come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? So we've got a woman delivering a deliverer. Pharaoh's daughter delivered Moses so that he could go on to become a deliverer. And now we have a woman who was caught in relationships, five husbands. I know she's with somebody else's husband. She's an adulterer. And she is doing what? She's had an encounter with Christ. He transformed her life. And then he launched her right back out into the same, to deal with the same men that she would have sinned with. Hi guys. What's going on? Okay, that's my kids. <laughs> the two of them are over there and they're trying hard not to. <laughs> they're trying hard to be quiet. Yes, Sister Cheeto says, I love the story. Called to deliver the men and not to sleep with them. Absolutely. So she was functioning as a satanic agent destroying men by sleeping with them by sleeping with other people's husbands you see when we have an encounter with christ he turns our lives around right he turns our lives around so now she has had her encounter and she is now becoming a deliverer how many people know that god wants to do that with us whether male or female he wants to affect change in our lives heal, heal us of our trauma heal us of our wounds so that he can then launch us to be deliverers because christ came to redeem that which was lost and each of us has a redemption role to complete in the earth so god Exactly. God, Satan had messed her job. Exactly. Exactly. God called her to be a deliverer, an evangelist. God called her to be a, a deliverer, an evangelist, but the enemy was using her to destroy men instead of affect change in the men's lives. And one of the things the Lord ta was talking to me about, the Holy Spirit was talking to me about, is as mothers. And in the last broadcast I shared with us, you know, we went through a time of repentance as women, but God is, is honing in on the mother nature of women today. And as moms, sometimes when, when, when the father leaves or the husband leaves and you have the children to take care of, sometimes, especially when, especially when the, it was not a good circumstance you know, sometimes the mother is bitter, she's angry, especially when the child looks like the father, she could take that, that anger and bitterness out on the child. And then what happens with our sons, the sons, is they, they become arrested in their development. So what does arrested in your development means? The last place where a man would have felt secure and felt affection from his mother, if it was not continuous, he gets, he says, stuck in his emotions. So many women are saying, I don't want to be no mommy to no man. I want when he comes, he knows what he's doing. He knows how he's supposed to function. He knows his vision, his purpose, and let's get the business on. But we only produce what was deposited in us. So we've got many men walking around today who are, are supposed to be deliverers in the house of God, who are supposed to be deliverers in business, who are supposed to be deliverers in the seven mountains of cultural influence, education, government, religion, family life, arts and entertainment, media. But they are arrested in their development because their mothers experience abandonment. And so the children experience abandonment when the man left. And so we wonder why the men aren't staying. 
but the men are looking thanks for joining crystal the men are looking for their mother this is what the holy spirit revealed to me the men keep going from woman to woman because they're looking for a woman who will treat them with that love and affection that they didn't have when they were kids just like how a girl looks for affection from a man because her dad wasn't there for her this is family foundations we are talking about guys this is family foundations this is why our families are in such dire need because we have wounded men and women getting married having children and then not able to cope because we have not been adequately prepared God is looking for deliverers but how are we gonna be deliverers for God as Don Franklin says a redemption role. I like that and agree. God has to redeem us individually. We have to go through that healing process as women, as men, so that then God can launch us for his redemptive role in our lives. So today we're talking about, thank you for joining Wilma Jean. We're talking about God is calling women to be delivered. We looked at two women. We looked at Pharaoh's daughter who rescued Moses from the from the water and then we looked at the woman who had five husbands and then was sleeping with somebody else's husband and God used her to go right back into that kind of lifestyle not to live the lifestyle but to call the men out she drew the men out of adultery just like how Pharaoh's daughter drew Moses out of the water who is God calling you to draw out if this broadcast is a blessing to you I want you to share it out if you know that there are women that need healing in their emotions, healing in, in different areas of their lives, I want you to share this with them. Father, I thank you for the women. Thank you for sharing, Wilma Jean, and thank you for joining the broadcast. I want to thank you for women today. I lift up the women on this broadcast and those who will watch the replay, and I ask you to heal, deliver, set them free, Lord God, from all the wounds that they would have experienced with men, O oh God, so that they can be deliverers in the house of the Lord, so they can flow in their redemptive, in their redemptive purpose for which you have created them. Lord, we have looked in your word and we have seen women time and time again, Lord. You use them to restore, Lord God. And we just want to say thank you. We just want to say thank you that you have a redemptive purpose for us. We, we, Lord, we, many of us, I have experienced re abandonment, rejection from a young age. Lord God, and, 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 and you have turned my life around and you are now using me to be a deliverer for, for the nations. And I ask you, Lord God, to, to, to heal your women and set them on the path which you have created them to, to, to function in. They, they're deliverers. They may be deliverers in business. They may be deliverers in, in, in family life. They may be deliverers in arts and entertainment, in media, Lord God, in religion. Lord God, whatever you have called your women to be delivers in I ask you to speak to them by the power of your spirit I ask that at every turn Lord God that you they will be able to see what you created them to do and specifically those who are called in the body of Christ to restore men that they would rise up and fulfill that mandate that they would rise up be healed so that they can like this woman who had the five husbands and who 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 was living with a with a with a man a, a man that was not her husband lord god that they would allow you to heal them process them and deliver them so that they can affect change in the earth for your honor for your glory and praise lord i thank you for women today i speak blessing into my sisters i speak blessing into their womanhood i speak blessing into their sexuality i speak blessings to their body i speak blessings to their minds i speak blessings to their heart Lord that you would gather their hearts back from the highways and the byways and the relationships that they would have been in where they were scattered where they were disappointed disappointed where they were rejected where they were abandoned Lord God where men would have hurt them that you would heal the hearts of your women today Lord God you are calling a company of women you are calling a company of women to affect change in the earth you are calling a, a company of women to bring healing and restoration Lord God and I 
I just thank you. I thank you so much for the women on this broadcast and those who will watch the replay that your redemptive purpose is being unfolded in the name of Jesus. Whatever you have written in the Lamb's Book of Life for the women watching this broadcast and those that will watch the replay, I ask for your oil to flow in their lives. I ask you to cause destiny helpers to come Lord God and, and partner with them and help them heal and be delivered and set on the path for redemption in the mighty name of Jesus Lord God I ask you to hear from heaven this morning and heal the land of your women your daughters of Zion need healing so that they can fulfill the mandate for which you have placed on their lives Lord I thank you for the women I speak blessing on their lives in the city I speak blessing in the field I speak blessing when they're coming when they go. I speak blessing in their relationships with their children. I speak blessings in their relationships with their husbands. Blessing in their relationships with their fathers. Blessing in the relationships with the men of influence in their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for the women watching this broadcast. I thank you for the women who are hearing the clarion call and hearing the commission to rise and be healed so that they can be healers, so that they can be deliverers. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, I thank you for everyone watching this broadcast and I thank you for everyone watching the replay that they will fulfill their divine mandate they will fulfill their purpose Lord God I thank you for women who you are calling to be intercessors for men I thank you for women who you are calling to give godly advice to men I thank you for women who you are calling to mentor men Lord God and bring them into the right position as we saw with these two women in the Bible, Lord God, one spent her money so that the, the child could be nurtured. She spent her, 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 she, she allowed God to use wisdom so that she could send off the child to the right place where he could be healed. Lord God, may we, where he could, could grow and be fed. Lord God, I just thank you for women this morning. And I thank you for mothers, Lord God, who may hear this broadcast and, and feel guilty because they missed the mark. I ask you to heal mothers this morning. Morning. Mothers, Lord God, that, that felt abandoned and rejected by their, their, their children's father or by their husband. Lord God, who left them with the responsibility of the kids. I thank you for healing their hearts this morning, Lord God. I thank you for healing their hearts this morning. I, I, I loose them from the spirit of bitterness in the name of Jesus. And I, I call for the oil of joy and gladness. Lord God, I speak restoration. All the years of canker worm, the palmer worm, and the locust, Lord God, have taken from them that you would heal and restore, that you would restore the joy, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, that you would restore the joy this morning. I call forth joy, joy to bubble up in the souls of women. I call for joy to bubble up in the soul of mothers. The word of God said there's therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And I thank you for women. I thank you for mothers this morning. I thank you for your healing power that is reaching right down into their souls, into their emotions that are raw and are wounded. Lord, I thank you for your oil, your healing balm. Lord God, that you would touch the hearts of the mothers this morning and that they would be delivered and free, Lord God, from condemnation today in the mighty name of Jesus I in the realm of the spirit I'm seeing a woman down on the ground and she's rising up she's rising up God is calling us to rise up today God is calling us to rise up today father I thank you for the rising up of your women I thank you for their true identity I thank you for turning the situations around Lord God, I thank you for that what the enemy meant for evil, you are turning around for their good in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we give you thanks and praise for healing today. We give you thanks and praise for healing us today, oh God. We thank you for hearing the cry of our hearts today as women, oh God. Women that are tired, Lord God, because they're carrying the full mandate of mother and father. Lord, I thank you for hearing and we thank you, Lord God, for delivering the men. We thank you for causing the men to come into their rightful place. Lord God, where we can be co-laborers, Lord. Lord God and build the kingdom of God and build the empire and build the legacy that you created us to build together as was in the Garden of Eden, where you said there were to build together coal laborers. That's what we desire as women, Lord God. So I thank you for purifying our motives and purifying our hearts so we can see heaven's agenda and we can work along with the men that you have created for us in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you this morning for beauty for ashes. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for turning our situations and circumstances around. We thank you for the men that are in our sphere of influence. We thank you that you're picking 
picking them up from the miry clay. And Lord, even though the clay was marred in your hand, you're starting over with them again. We thank you for humility for the men that they would humble themselves and seek your face and turn from their wicked ways so that you will hear from heaven and you will heal their land. Father, we ask you to heal the land of the men. We ask you to heal the land of the women. We ask you to heal the land of the family in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I stand today and I lift my hand and I say, here I am, use me to bring restoration in the lives of men, to bring restoration in the lives of family, to bring restoration in the lives of women in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask you to arise, oh God. We give heaven no rest until we see restoration in the men's in the men's lives. We give heaven no rest until we see restoration in the family's life. Lord God, you are a generational God. You are concerned with generations. You say you bless to a thousand generations. And Lord God, we decree and declare over our generations that they are the generations of the blessed. They are blessed. They are blessed by you in their going out and their coming in. Every man that marries in, every man that is born in, every man that is assigned to our lives, every man that is adopted into us, our godsons, our sons, our brothers, our fathers, our uncles, our nephews, our cousins, our grandfathers, great grandfathers. Lord God, we speak your blessing into their lives today. We speak that they're blessed in the city and blessed in the field. They're blessed when they're coming, blessed when they go. they're men of integrity. They walk in righteousness and, and holiness. They are men of circumcised hearts. They are men that are single-minded and stable in all their ways. We prophesy success. We bless the work of their hands. Oh God, bless the work of their hands in the mighty name of Jesus. Your word says for lack of vision, my people perish. We ask you, sovereign God, to give our men a vision. Give them a vision as they sleep at night. Give them visions of who you say they are. Restore their identity, oh God. God, in the mighty name of Jesus, the original intent, Lord, today, by the power of your spirit, we strip them of the spirit of perversion. We strip them of, of, of abandonment and rejection. We, we strip them of the false identity that the enemy placed on them. And Lord, uh, replace that with your identity. We ask you to heal our men because we want to co-labor co -labor with them, Lord God. We ask you to heal our sons because we want to co-labor with them as was in the, 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 the Garden of Eden, Lord God, where you said they are to work together. Lord, we come into unity with your word. Your your word cannot return void, but it must accomplish what you set it out to accomplish. And when we pray your word, O oh God, the angels of the Lord hearken to the word of God and the voice of God to carry out what God has said. So Father, we partner with heaven today and we say, let your kingdom come, O oh God, and let your will be done on earth as you have ordained it in heaven concerning the men in our lives, concerning, concerning the men in the earth, concerning women, concern, concerning women, concerning families. Lord, your word says in Psalm 133, how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. It's like the oil that flowed down from Aaron's. Thank you for joining, Brother Patrick. We're praying for men today, and we're calling women to commissioning women to come and align with what God is doing in their lives so that they can affect change in the men in their lives. In the name of Jesus, we call for unity that commands God's blessing as seen in 133. So Father, we thank you today. We give you thanks and praise for what you're doing. We thank you for raising up women who will pray for men, who will give godly advice, and who will mentor men. Father, we, we, we're sorry for where we allowed the enemy to use us to tear men down. But we are we receive your commission today to, to lift our brothers up in prayer, to guide them in godly advice. When they come, Lord God, and they say, oh, my wife isn't treating me well. My wife isn't doing this. My wife isn't doing that. Lord, we will not take advantage of that. We will not let our wounded places cause us. To, 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 to have affairs with men because that's what this woman was doing in, in John 4. That's what she was doing. She was allowing, allowing her circumstance, her need to cause her to be a tool of Satan to, 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 to tear men down, to destroy families. There were five men that husband she had and then she had another man. So think of the impact when we lie with another man's, what, another woman's husband. Think of the impact. So she had six families there in problems, including hers. This is what we do. God wants us to see. This is a sobering word, as I said to you. God wants us to see what is happening. What happens with a woman is when her father has left her, abandoned her, rejected her, 
whatever the circumstances are, she begins to feel need. She still has that void for affection. Fathers give daughters affection. And, and affirm them and make them feel secure. So a woman goes throughout the earth looking for that. And so if another woman's husband comes, she is not concerned that this man has a wife and children. She is concerned about getting her own needs filled. So Father, I ask you to fill the voids in women's hearts today. I ask you to fill the voids so that we can rise up and be used by you to affect change in the lives of husbands, in the lives of men, in our spheres of, spheres of influence today. Father, I thank you for revealing your truth, for revealing the strategy of the enemy, Lord God, so that we can no longer be ignorant of the enemy's devices, but we could rise up and be tools, your redemptive tools in the earth to affect change. So when men private message me and start going down a wrong path, mm -mm, that's not for me. I am not needy. I am not needy. God is my father. He has filled the voids inside my soul where my father, husband, whoever else should have filled. I have asked God to do that so that I can be a blessing to marriages. So I can be a blessing to marriages. So I can be a blessing. Yes, just go change. Okay. Just go change and uh, let them know you can come out. Uh, so I can be a blessing to marriages because that's what God wants us to do. He doesn't want us as women lowering our dignity and lowering our standards that when another woman's husband come and he starts flirting with us and telling us how beautiful we are, that we go and we destroy a home. Because when we get involved with married men, what do we do? We now have positioned ourselves for God to deal with us. Go around, please. We have positioned ourselves. This, I, I'm being real and honest with us today. God wants us to understand that marriage is a covenant. It is a covenant between F Father God, the triune God, a wife, and a husband. And so when, if a husband comes and says, my wife isn't sleeping with me, my wife isn't doing this. You sisters, I challenge you today, send them right back to their wives. Do not get involved with married men because we bring a curse on ourselves and we bring a curse on our bloodline because we have gone. He says, let no man separate what God has joined together. So now we call marriages back together. We call marriages back together. Everything that is standing in the way that is causing separation right now, let it be destroyed by the sword of the Lord because this is the covenant that God created. We want strong men. We want wise men. We want men of integrity. We want men of integrity. And therefore, we as women need to do our part. So in order for us to do our part, we have to be like this woman that allowed God to encounter, have that divine encounter with Christ and ask him to heal us of all the voids that we have in our souls. If this broadcast is a blessing, I want to challenge you to share it out. Pardon me. This is not about condemnation today. This is about us opening up as women and letting God heal us so we can do what God has commissioned us to do. And that is redemption. That is restoration in the earth. I thank you guys for sticking around on the broadcast today. Because what we do is when we play with married men, we are sowing infidelity into our own marriages. And so when we get married and we see trouble, we're like, oh my gosh, how could this happen? But we forget that we have sowed seeds of infidelity into our own marriage by having affairs with married men. I told you guys this was going to be a sobering word today. Now, we have to expose the work of darkness so that light can come. So if any of you on this broadcast have had affairs with married men, it is time to repent. It is time to repent. God is calling us to a place of repentance. We cry out in churches for revival. Lord, we want revival. We want revival. But then when sobering messages come, what do we do? When sobering messages come, we run in a corner. It is not about running in a corner. This woman, when Jesus confronted her about the five men that she, husbands that she had, and then she was sleeping with another woman's husband, 
What did she do? She took the rebuke. She took the healing and then she was commissioned and she took off and went and got the same men probably that she slept with and said, come see a man. So she was a tool of, 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 of perversion in the hand of the enemy. And now she is being a tool of redemption. These are things that we need to discuss in the church. We have situations in churches where leaders are sleeping with women and, 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 and women are sleeping with men that are not theirs and nobody's dealing with it. This is the time to deal with it. If you want to see revival in your church, if you want to see transformation in your church, we have to deal with the issues. We have to deal with the issues people we can't stick our head down in the ground we can no longer as a church you see why the church is not affecting change in the world is because we are not dealing with the issues of the heart these are the heart issues these are the heart issues these are the heart issues in order for us to understand that affairs is not good we have to deal with the issues. We have to expose it in our own hearts. We're not walking around pointing at people. But if God shows you by revelation that somebody's having a fear, instead of gossiping about them, I want you, I'm commissioning you today as a prophet of the Lord, I'm commissioning you to get in your closet as an intercessor of the Lord to get in your closet and pray when you see people having affairs. If God tells you to go speak to them, who am I to say? Go speak to them. But it is not about exposing people's affairs. Okay, get brother to help you find them. Can you help her find her glasses, please? Thank you, buddy. Right? It is not about exposing people. It is about petitioning God when he gives you insight and revelation. We need to pray for one another. We need to pray for one another. I cannot stress it enough. I remember people used to laugh at me because I love to pray. But I understand that prayer moves heaven. Prayer affects change. I have been through some horrific things in my life. And it is only because they were in the chair. The glasses were in the chair. And it's only because I had people praying the word and it's only because I locked into God myself that I was able to God was able to bring me through some of the situations and circumstances so when I talk about pray pray and prayer I'm talking from my personal experience so I want to challenge you today if you desire to get married check in the chair guys okay if you, my daughter can't find her glasses, guys. So that's what, what's happening here on the sideline. If you desire to get married, you know, everybody wants a perfect husband and, and everybody wants a perfect this, but we have skeletons in our closet that need to be addressed. I'm going to be straight with you. Great, great. Yay, she found the glasses. Okay, see you, have fun, right? We have to be serious. It is not just about a wedding day and it is not just about marriage. The things that we refuse to deal with before we get married, I guarantee you, they're going to manifest and they're going to magnify in your marriage. I know what I'm talking about. That's why I'm writing a book to help people prepare for marriage, to deal with the heart issues. It is not about shame. People allow shame to stop them from dealing with infidelity, to, from dealing with molestation, from dealing with rejection and abandonment. But if you want your marriage to succeed, listen to the wisdom today. Get before God. Lord, I want to get married. Lord, I may even have seen someone who I desire to get married to. But I'm coming before you today and asking you to heal, deliver, and set me free. So I will be an asset in a marriage and not a liability. Because we have many broken people getting married in the body and outside of the body, but then they don't deal with their wounded places. And the wounded places causes the foundation of the marriage cannot stand because the foundation of the lives of the people cannot stand. If this broadcast is a blessing to you today, I want to encourage you to share it out, please. If you know that is blessing you, then it is going to bless other people. So that in, I have been getting on Facebook Live and I've been writing and you guys have been encouraging the fruit, have been encouraged by the fruit of what I've written. Sow this seed into my life by sharing the broadcast. And sow the seed into your life and future generations by praying and repenting in the area of relationships. I want to challenge you today. This is serious business. 
this is serious business. If you want your marriage and the marriages of future generations to thrive, deal with the junk in your trunk. Deal with the things that the Holy Spirit is pointing out to you today. You know, when we get married, we always, we often blame the spouse when trouble comes because society has taught us and our family history has taught us to blame people and not to deal with issues. But I want you to be a sober minded people today. Let the Holy Spirit give his searchlight and search your heart so that you can be healed. So you can rise and be healed today. God wants us to be an asset in any marriage. He wants us to be an asset to men as women. Yes, he made us fearfully and wonderfully. Some of us are extremely curvaceous. Some of us are straight. Some of us have big parts and small parts. And so we are aesthetically beautiful to men. But when we are going to use this temple here to be a tool of seduction and bring men down. That is not the plan of God. So I want to encourage us today, sisters, to take one, marriage seriously, and number two, being your brother's keeper seriously. God is calling us as women to be deliverers. As I said before, if a married man or a, a, a man of your friend, a husband of your friend, a boyfriend of your friend comes and he's inappropriate with you, I want to challenge you today rise to the place of dignity and tell him no that's not appropriate right because we allow men to do the things in secret when we need to expose them and confront them and that's how we're going to affect change by being women of dignity so i want to thank you for watching this broadcast today i want to thank you for joining i want to thank you replay viewers for watching and i want to Thank you for allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to you through this broadcast today. It is a sobering word, I know. But if you heed the wisdom that the Holy Spirit is revealing, it will be well. He says in the word, when we are willing and obedient, we will eat the good of the land. So again, thank you for joining the broadcast. My name is Julia Spence. I'm a certified life coach and speaker coming to you live from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. I have found in a company called Liberty Life Coaching Solutions. And what do we do? We speak. We coach. And we affect change. Affect change. We affect change in the earth for God's glory. Because God has put the mandate on my life to restore family life. I am passionate about family life. From a young age, God has called me to, actually before he knitted me together in my mother's womb, he has called me to family life. He has called me to help people discover and walk in their divine purpose. That's what I do at Liberty Life Coaching Solutions. Thank you for joining all of you who joined the broadcast while we were in the midst of sharing. Thank you for joining Paula. Thank you for joining Bev. Thank you for joining Madonna. Thank you for joining Allison Weeks. Thank you for joining Giselle. Thank you guys so much for joining. Be blessed and encouraged today. God reveals to redeem. God reveals to redeem. God causes us, like the word of God is like a hammer. <laughs> Sometimes it comes down so heavy that we're like, God, I can't handle this. I had, I was told of a situation where God said to a person, I'm touching this area of your life. I'm touching this area of your life and I want to deal with it now. The person said, no, I'm not ready, Lord. And that person went on to mess up their marriage. I'm sharing this only because I want you guys to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying today. Giselle is saying, we must keep the objective of us dealing with the issues in the body of Christ, of the body God-centered by the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. This is not about being torn down and, and all of that. God reveals to redeem. He wants us to affect change. He wants us to operate at a higher level. He wants us to move from glory to glory. But if we have hidden things in our hearts, which God knows about already, right? And the enemy, we keep being the enemy's duck, his puppet on a string. Because we refuse to deal with the issues, so what does he do? He keeps using it against us. He keeps using it against us. And, and then we fall into sin and we're like, oh my God, and now we got to start all over again. 
Thanks for joining Mia. So I want to challenge us today to allow the Holy Spirit to search our hearts. Search our hearts. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me as Savior and know my thoughts. See if there be any wicked way in me. And heal me and set me free. That's why I loved King David. Because he was a man after God's own heart. Because he was a repentant man. And that's one of the things missing from the church. We want to hear the prophet tell us, oh, we're going to get a car, we're going to get a house, we're going to get a husband. But this prophet is not saying that this morning. This prophet is saying, if you want these things, you better get before the Holy Spirit and let that search light. Search the deep things that have wounded you so they won't trip you up in your future. That's why God does this. That's why the hammer comes. The word of God is like a hammer because he wants to highlight the things that are hidden, the wounded places so that healing can come. So Lord, I thank you for every person watching this broadcast and those that will watch the replay. Thank you for joining Regina. Sister Regina, you're going to have to watch the replay. We're talking about God bringing, calling women to be deliverers from men. So to recap, for those who just joined and who will watch the replay, God is raising up women to restore men. That's what the Holy Spirit gave me about two, three mornings ago. He's calling women to be deliverers of men. But in order for us to deliver the men, we have to allow him to deliver us, just like the woman at the, the, the Sumerian woman at the well who had five husbands and one man that she was sleeping with that was not her husband. He wants us to be intercessors for men. He wants us to give godly advice. He wants us to mentor men. And he wants us to where we need to invest financially to help the men. He wants us to do that. Because some of them had mothers that failed because they too were challenged. It is my pleasure to serve. It is my pleasure, Giselle. Giselle says, then we as women can really take on this word. Thank you for being the vessel, sis. Yes, sometimes, you know, you bring a word that is challenging, but it is challenging for change, right? That's what the word of God does. It hits us like a hammer, like I was saying, and then we are transformed in the inner person. That's why the body keeps failing. I will say that again. That's why the body keeps failing because we, 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 we accept his Christ. That's the first stage of salvation. But the second stage of salvation is transformation of our will, our emotions, and our intellect. Those encompass our souls. So until the soul is healed, it will continue to break every relationship that it's involved in. Everything its hands touches, it will fail because we have to get the wounded places healed. And that's why the Holy Spirit is here, right? Heal, comfort, deliver, set free so we can be set on the path. So thank you guys for joining the broadcast. Thank you guys for watching the replay. Replay viewers, Julia Spence, Certified Life Coach, coming to you live from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, encouraging you to walk in purpose, encouraging you to let the purposes and plans of God for your life be revealed so you can affect change and align with his divine redemptive purpose in your life and recognize that the way that you live affects future generations so it's important for us to follow what God wants so if you I offer a half an hour a free consult for anybody that's seeking coaching and the in order to book time with me what is the link now the link is all lowercase it's b-i-t dot l-y forward slash walk in purpose again to book time with me bit dot l y forward slash walk in purpose and again my company is called liberty life coaching solutions thank you guys so much for spending your saturday morning evening night whenever with me i trust it this broadcast has been a blessing and has been a challenge for you to affect positive change and if it has please share it out to others so that they too can be challenged to affect change for God's glory. Have a great day now. See you soon. Bye now.